All right guys, so today we're gonna to talk about three pretty popular knife brands, and I think I'm gonna pull out some fairly surprising knives from each, at least with the first one, it's gonna be pretty darn surprising. But I wanted to talk about, as the title of this video says, my favorite knives from each of these three bigger brands. So first one's gonna be Benchmade, then Spyderco, then Emerson. Both, all of these guys are pretty established in the knife world and knife community, and they have been in the game for decades, um, of course, Spyderco being the one that eventually, of course, Spyderco being the one that invented the pocket clip for the knife. These guys have no doubt contributed a lot of very useful features that even other companies, as you'll see, or these brands kind of copy each other from. Things like the Emerson Wave is featured on many different Spydercos. Things like the Opening Hole is featured on many different Benchmades. So these brands have no doubt copied each other and done different interesting things. So I think it's worth talking about each one and going over my favorite knife that I own in my collection from each of these uh, companies. So this may not necessarily be my absolute favorite knife from the company, but this is my favorite of each in my collection. So the first one is going to be Benchmade. Now this is actually, to be completely transparent, my favorite Benchmade ever created. Benchmade has made hundreds of knife models, but this has to be my absolute favorite Benchmade ever created. And I don't honestly talk about it too much, but this is the Benchmade 630 full-sized skirmish. And this knife is of course long since discontinued, um, but this knife is absolutely beautiful. I love everything about this blade. And the 630 skirmish was actually, for those who don't know about my knife collecting kind of history, this was my first real grail knife. This was the first knife that I saw as a teen growing up in, in knives or into knives. And I saw this knife and it was so unobtainable for me because it was like $400 back in the early 2000, like 2008 to 2011. This thing was like $400, $450. And I was like, there's no way I can afford that. You know, this is just complete unobtainium. But when I became an adult and got adult money, I made it a priority to track one of these guys down. Now, unfortunately, kind of like um, many kids my age with, you know, like the posters of knives you want or of cars you want or hot ladies or whatever. Um, I never actually handled a skirmish until I purchased this one and got it. Uh, so I was not aware of just how large it is. Like, of course you can look at spec sheets and stuff, but this is a rather large knife and that is primarily one of the contributing reasons as to why I don't really EDC this knife anymore, uh, just because it is an absolutely huge knife. Like it's not just large as you can see it is a fairly decent sized knife but this knife is also just wide like this is a big knife this is a pocket full of a blade so anyways i don't really um treat this as a safe queen per se like it has some snail trails on it it has some dings overall it is actually in pretty good condition but um yeah so i don't tend to carry it but it is a really sentimental knife for me. And for me personally, this is my favorite Benchmade because it is just an absolute beautiful blade. And for me, I really love um, Neil Blackwood, the maker of this knife. Um, he, this is a kind of production model of his skirmish. So if you guys go look up custom skirmishes or Neil Blackwood skirmishes, you guys can see what he did for actual like, you know, custom knives, but those are wildly expensive and pretty much unobtainable at this point because Neil Blackwood no longer makes custom knives. So getting an actual like real skirmish is basically impossible. But this blade to me just, it looked so alien, so futuristic and so cool to me. And if you guys don't know personally, Personally, I am a pretty big fan of recurved blades. There will be another recurve on this list. So I, I know recurves are not the most, you know, like functional as far as like everyday carry and even wilderness use, but they just look cool. And so that like inner, you know, 12 year old in you just has to love that just awesome kind of um, slightly recurved blade that just flows into a beautiful handle. Now there are more stylized versions of the skirmish and there are different like variants. Some have like flame anodized, you know, like dots on them, but not too many of them actually have blacked out blades. So this one's kind of rare in its own regard because it has a blacked out blade, but this is, this is the knife that I wanted, wanted for many years. And so I was so happy to find them. And to be fair, you can still find these guys. 
I would say reasonably easy, but of course these being long since discontinued, they originally were $400 and um, they have now only gone up in price. So they're not massively expensive. You can usually find them for about $600, but that being said, they only get more rare, more desirable and more collectible over the years. But this is my favorite Benchmade and in my opinion, and in my opinion, this is the best bench made ever made. So like I said, just my opinion, some people may disagree. And once again, it's not necessarily like the most tanky or heavy hard use blade, but it's the best bench made in my opinion. All right, so now going over to Spyderco. Now, if I had to pick like what my absolute favorite Spyderco would be, it would ironically probably be the Spyderco uh, Nirvana, but Nirvanas are incredibly expensive, very similar in mindset to the Skirmish. They are a Peter Recenti or Recenti design, and they are a very beautifully made titanium frame lock, um, but the Nirvana is incredibly hard to find, and I have seen a few pop up over the years, but they are very expensive, so I have not yet got a Nirvana. I may never, but that's probably honestly like my favorite Spider Co. But my favorite Spider Co. that I own in my collection is pretty difficult. I do actually like quite a few of them, but I'm going to say, at least for the time being, my Spyderco Manix 2. And it's my favorite for a couple reasons. This probably honestly from this, you know, distance away just looks like a standard Manix 2, but this actually is a kind of sleeper Manix 2 as you guys who know uh, or have been around the channel will know. This is a CPM S110V um, bladed Spyderco. So it has the standard black G10 kind of just plain Jane handles, but with that really high performance S110V blade on there. So this thing is a laser beam and I also have, as you guys can probably tell here, I have mirror polished that edge. So it is literally a laser beam with that full flat grind, a mirror polished edge on S110V. This thing is a monster. So anyways, this is probably my favorite, partly because it's a sleeper and I like that, but also too, it's just a very nice knife. I like the Manix 2 quite a bit. I like the way it fits in my hand. And one thing about the Manix that I kind of do and don't love, but something that is worth noting over something like a Spyderco PM2 or Paramilitary 2. Like when you look at this guy, you know, you have some jimping at the bottom, some jimping at the top, and you have a little bit of jimping on the back here of the handle, like in the liner, but you really don't have that much uh, jimping on this knife as a whole. The Manix 2 has a jimping here, or not so much jimping, but traction here, it has traction here. And then of course you have it jimping on your top and bottom like finger choils. And then you also have jimping or um, traction here. And so, and then you also have traction here. So this thing has tons of grip. However you grab this knife, there's a high chance that you're locking into some degree of traction. And I think that that is, like I said, a little bit of a blessing and a curse. Some people actually dislike the Manix 2 because of all of its jimping and traction cuts. And to be fair, like I said, you have a big spot here, big spot here, and you got like little jimping here, little jimping here, and then just jimping all over the place. This knife is covered in traction, but I actually like it. it gives you a really good purchase on your knife and you are not going to be slipping in just about any condition. So aside from that, I also like that this is a ball bearing lock, makes it very similar to something like an axis. You can very easily open and close it with one hand, easily spidey flick it. One of my favorite things about this knife is just how accessible that opening hole is. And of course, similar to the paramilitary two, this does have an oversized hole. So it's very easy to flick out, very easy to deploy and use. So that is my Spyderco Manix 2. It is my favorite Spyderco um, in my collection. And it's downright one of my favorite Spydercos as a whole, just because it does, it's so good at like cutting things. I like the blade shape. I like the performance of it. All right, so now probably to the least exciting knife on the table, at least for, I would say, most people. I don't think too many people really get excited about Emerson's anymore, but seeing as I have seven Emerson's, I do actually like Emerson knives quite a bit, and I think that they do a pretty good job. Of course, they are quirky and weird, so, you know, Emerson's, they're something that you're either gonna love or you're gonna hate, uh, but for me, my favorite 
Emerson, I would say, in my collection, even though I honestly love a lot of them. So it's kind of hard. I have like an Elvia here. I have a really cool Ensar. I have some of the, you know, more weird and wacky designs that they have made. But uh, outside of like the cool, weird, wacky ones, I would say for an actual useful, like everyday carry blade, something that I do put in my pocket, the Spider, Spider Co. Uh, Emerson Commander. Now, it's a little bit of a toss up for me because I also really do enjoy the Emerson uh, Mini Com or Mini Commander, but the Commander for me, I think, is just a better size. Like, it just fits me a little bit better. I kind of wish that the Commander wasn't quite as large. Like, the Mini Com for me is just a little bit too small. Obviously, the Super Commander is way too big, but the Commander itself, it, to me, is just, just a touch big, but still totally pocketable and overall pretty nice. So, the Emerson Commander for me is probably my favorite blade from them. Once again, you guys can tell I'm a big fan of deeply recurved or just recurved blades in general. I also have an Emerson Patriot that is very similar where it has a, you know, kind of buoy styled tip, but has a lightly recurved edge to it. I really do enjoy my um, recurved blades. So this one is cool. Like I said, it works well. It does a good job. It's almost like a kukri styled blade to it, but overall the Emerson Commander and Mini Commander as a whole are probably my favorites, but just really cool cool knives. Um, I do, like I said, really enjoy my Emersons. And Emerson, like I've said before, has been in the game for quite some time. It's uh, hard to exactly like explain just how um, impactful people like Ernie Emerson have been on the knife community. Because once again, even if you're not a huge fan of Emerson knives as a whole, and once again, you don't have to necessarily like every one of their like wacky designs. The Elvia is definitely like a little bit out there. Um, the Ensar is a little bit weird, but you know, you don't necessarily have to be a huge fan of these built blades in particular. But for sure, um, Emerson has definitely made a lot of really important contributions to the knife world and to other makers. Once again, you know, there are things that these different knife companies have copied from each other to make their own products. So definitely something that's worth you know, noting and talking about. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you liked taking a look at this Elvia real quick. I thought I'd throw it in here just because it's a spicy one. Definitely not like my favorite knife for um, EDC per se, but it's a really cool knife and it fits in very well just with having you know, something weird, something surprising. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.